When I was at school, they inevitably ask you what are you going to do when you grow up, dear? And I made the mistake of saying I wanted to be an artist at one stage. And I was told, no, you aren't. You have to get a real job, you know, do something real. And I thought, well, I really do want to paint. And I'd sort of tried a few things and realised that I really just wanted to be a painter. I thought, well, I'll give it a year and see how I get on. And 15 years later, I thought, oh, I was only going to give this a year, wasn't I? Well, perhaps I'm going to do it. I come from a family of storytellers. If there was a complicated way to tell people about something, you did that. I grew up with a lot of elderly relatives, all the great aunts who lived in this house. They were always telling stories. They were all very witty people, all involved in the repertory theatre company. And any time there was a concert in Lindisfarne, they'd put on sketches for that. So I grew up in that sort of culture. I followed that tradition, but I do my storytelling visually. My aim is to make paintings that could only be painted in Tasmania. I want to reflect the Tasmanian bush. I'm just always overwhelmed at the strangeness and the incredible shapes that you find out in nature, which is why I describe them as being Tasmanian Gothic. I like the term and now I'm doing my best to live up to it. I think one of the important influences of growing up in this particular bit of bush is that it used to be a farm. My great uncles tried to farm it about the time of the First World War and shortly thereafter, but it's very poor soil and there's no water, so it was doomed to failure. By the time I came along, really, the farm was completely overgrown. It had gone back to bush. But um, the remains were there. You know, it wasn't nice, neat rolling paddocks with nice, neat hedges or anything like that. It was just overgrown bush, remains of old fences through the bush, bits of rusting machinery everywhere. But this is the sort of thing that crops up in my paintings all the time. Well, I've always done paintings that were a little bit, shall we say, unusual, and art critics have never been able to work out what to call them, so they've usually sort of fallen back on surrealism, but I don't like that because I don't think my paintings are surreal. Because that was a, a movement of its time, at that time, and the aims of surrealism were certainly not my aims. My work is more intent on expressing an idea, so they're more expressionist paintings. I heard the term Tasmanian Gothic in relation to literature, and there was a course on uh, Tasmanian Gothic literature at university. I thought, well, that's a nice term, I like that, because it wasn't a term you heard all that often at that stage. Well, then I had to build a website to go with it, and having done that, then I had to do some paintings that sort of fit it in. So, in a way, the term describes my art, but it's also helped to define my art. It gave me a definite direction and something to work for. So, that's basically what I'm trying to do now, is express the more haunting and unusual aspects of the Tasmanian landscape. I couldn't possibly paint the things I see as being representations of nature because nobody would believe them. There's a painting I've just completed which looks as if it's a total fantasy, but in actual fact it's a still life study. So you find things that are really familiar and distort them and change them so that they look unusual. Then if you find something that's totally outrageous and outlandish, you paint it as if it's something you've imagined. And so, yes, I have distorted things a little bit, and it's just a matter of emphasis, but the painting itself is just a straight-out still life study, even though it looks like a strange landscape. 
and this is basically how it works. You find things that are realistic and you make them look wonderful. <laughs>